Hi everyone, welcome to today's video called Maintaining Momentum. We are going to take you today through some strategies for staying healthy, safe, and optimistic during this time. We are all volunteers at Dr. Kearney's clinic and are looking forward to sharing some key information with you in this video. My name is Zoya and I'm joined by Frank, Vikita, Samira, Stephanie, and Hannah for the preparation and presentation of these slides. Feel free to pause this video at any moment and take some time to go through the content or rewatch it. We will be providing our contact information at the end of the video, so stay tuned. So before we begin with the content, we thought it would be helpful to just go through a wellness check-in with you. So there are a couple questions on the screen here. Feel free to pause the video and actually write down your answers to these questions, uh, but we will also read them aloud for you. So the first one is, how are you feeling today? We understand that it's a very stressful time, so taking some time for your mental health and well-being is very important as well. What are some of your health goals this year? It could be this month, uh, this week, or overall in the new year. Reflect on some of your goals and how they've been changing and how you want them to improve over the course of the next couple of months. What have you tried so far to achieve your goals? And what has worked for you and what has not been working? Okay, so for the content of today's video, um, this is our agenda. We will be first going through mental health and well-being resources. We will provide some that are technology-based and some that are non-technology-based to give you a holistic overview. We then have something on weight management and physical health. So we will be also going over some technology um, that is available to help manage your weight and also keep good physical health. We have some new recipes. We have minimizing food waste and also um, a segment on safe grocery, grocery options. So first we will be beginning with the mental health and resilience component. So anxiety can be a common effect of lockdown. And what is anxiety anyway? So in moderation, it can be adaptive, healthy emotions, and it can give us energy to handle situations. However, in excess, it can cause catastroph catastrophizing, sorry, rumination and lead to the fight or flight response. And this can prevent purposeful action. So what are some strategies to manage anxiety, especially during the lockdown? One that I've found particularly helpful is called journaling. Journaling can help you set and achieve your goals. It allows you to track your progress and make plans for the future. It can also help you reduce stress and anxiety. It's a method to help express yourself, relieve any tension or negative emotions, and is also a method for self-reflection. So you can look back on what you've done in the week, in the month, learn more about what's working for you and what isn't. So these are some examples of journals that you can purchase online, but you can also just use any notebook or paper that you have available to you to write down your goals and thoughts throughout the day. And you can use this time to self-reflect and focus on your well-being. So I've actually purchased one of these journals myself called Create Your Calm, and I found it's very helpful to write something down throughout the day. In particular, there's one page here that makes you reflect kind of on um, some of the things that you're already doing to take care of yourself and some of the things that you want to do to take care of yourself, which is really unique. Um, and you can, of course, write the date in this journal and come back to it at a later time and track your progress, which is really nice. Um, as well, the importance of positive thinking. Positive emotions build valuable resources. They can help us with stronger relationships, greater resilience, better physical and mental health, and less physiological effects of anxiety and anger. And these are especially important during the stressful time. Yeah, so if you're looking for a more technological way to maintain your mental health, Headspace is actually a really good app that can be used to maintain and keep um, practicing mindfulness in your day-to-day -day life. Uh, mindfulness, to explain a little bit what that is, is basically a type of meditation in which you focus on being intensely aware of what you're sensing and feeling in the current present moment without any interpretation or judgment on how you feel. Becoming more mindful and focusing on the present can help you reduce anxiety and can be incre incredibly important given our current situation today. Um, Headspace is an app that will basically help you through a lot of guided med meditations, but also has additional features where it will help you even to track and monitor your sleeping patterns as well as your exercise habits, which are another two important att attributes to maintaining your mental health. So to install or download or access Headspace, you can just go to headspace.com in your browser, or you can download Headspace in your app store on your phone. 
Now to navigate a little bit through Headspace, um, this is their mobile app and this uh, slide basically shows a little bit about what they offer. Um, on their mobile app, they offer basically like a variety of videos that will illustrate and guide you through certain activities. For example, on the left side, uh, you can see their guided videos that will lead you through a workout. In this case, a running workout. Uh, following that, there's a podcast that's prepared by experts that teaches you how to manage your feelings and thoughts with the lifelong skill of everyday mind mindfulness uh, that you can access any time of the day. Um, you might have more or less of these tutorials or lessons depending on what you want. Um, and on the third panel, you can see that they have a whole bunch um, just depending on what you're looking for from anything from like personal growth or even on how to wake up. Um, and lastly, they also provide you sleep music and, and tips for you to be able to get a good night's rest and relax and prepare for the next day. So if you access uh, the website of Headspace uh, instead of the app, you come to a screen that somewhat looks like this. And, and the website will basically allow you to access a lot of the same features as the app. But additionally, alongside those promoted features, they have a variety of articles that are available for you on topical subjects, for example, election anxiety, and also how we can best manage our mental health, for example, if we're working from home. So a lot of these articles uh, are relevant and are important for our mental health and that will teach you how to manage your mental health uh, in different contexts and situations. Um, yeah, so you can see here that there are also uh, everyday, everybody headspace uh, areas where basically um, you can join a group of virtual people. It's like a virtual session where you're able to join uh, like a meditation session with everyone, for example, uh, in this case, you can see this is a stillness and meditation session, uh, as you can see on the right, uh, which is another feature of Headspace. And Headspace has actually been shown uh, to have some positive effects on our mental health as well as our behaviors, uh, increasing compassion by 23%, decreasing stress by 14%, increasing focus by 14%, decreasing aggression by 57%, and decreasing irritability by 27%. Okay, so now we are going to be getting into tracking your weight and health goals. Um, so we have a presentation here that's going to look into MyFitnessPal specifically, but let's just talk generally about why apps are useful. So the pros of apps can be that they have large food databases, barcode scanners, and recipe importers. Uh, so MyFitnessPal actually has a really cool feature where you can take your phone and scan the barcode. Um, and so this will allow you to essentially get all of the nutritional information for your food and the calories um, from your food just by scanning that barcode. Uh, as well, apps track the nutrients, counts the calories, and weight loss progress. So um, if you're tracking everything that you're eating in a day, the app will store the information and show you at the end what your total calorie intake is. So there are a couple of apps that we have had success with in the past at the clinic and also that have been recommended. Uh, MyFitnessPal being the one we're gonna talk about today, but as well, Lose It is another great app that has the same or similar tracking features. Um, and Weight Watchers as well has a great online program, but today we're just gonna go through MyFitnessPal. Okay, so one of our volunteers at the clinic has been kind enough to put together a short tutorial um, on how to use MyFitnessPal on the internet if you don't have the app. So I'm just going to get into playing that. Hello everyone. My name is Samira and I'm one of the volunteers here at Dr. Kearney's clinic. Today, I'm just gonna be leading you through a quick tutorial on how to use MyFitnessPal which is one of the apps that we spoke about in today's presentation. So this is the web version of MyFitnessPal. You can obviously download it through your app store for iPhones or Androids. There is a free version and a premium version, which is, um, I believe, costs a little bit more, but there is a free version that you're able to use and download. So right after you create your account, you sign up, you verify your email address, input some basic information, and when you log in, this is the page that you will come to. So this is your home page. Here at the top, you have your username. So if you click on that one, it will take you to your profile with some information that you um, put in when you first made your account. You can edit your profile. You can add a photo here if you would like. 
Then here on the left side are just some things that you can add onto your profile page. Just some things about you, maybe your job, maybe some hobbies that you have, why you want to get into shape. This is a great way to actually write down your goals and really remember why you want to be motivated, why you downloaded the app in the first place. Here are some inspirations. And the great thing about MyFitnessPal is you're actually able to invite friends and see what they're doing. So for example, um, about an hour ago, I went on a 30 minute walk. So I wrote that down on my newsfeed and people could see what I was up to. Then I'm gonna go back to my home and we're here. This is your daily summary. So these are the amount of calories that I consume in one day. You can obviously change that based on your goals. And this is how you add exercise and you add the food that you want to eat or that you have eaten in a specific day. So let's say I'm going to add in what I ate for breakfast today. So you're going to go to breakfast, you're going to add your food. So today I had a two egg omelet and I'm going to search that up. On the mobile app version, you're actually able to scan um, your barcode so that may be more convenient unfortunately on the web version of this it doesn't have that option so you're able to search the food in their database and when I search two egg omelet these are all the options that came up so you can look through it see what really fits what you ate so just for today's tutorial I'm gonna press this first one a two egg omelet 188 calories so then I can straight add that to my food diary or if I want to get some more information about this one I can click on nutrition info it really breaks down a lot about that omelet so I'm gonna add that to my food diary so now it's been added here into breakfast when I scroll down it will show you my remaining calories for today and this is just a visual which I think is a great way to actually see how much you've had for fats and proteins and carbs so far then I'm going to go back to my home, I'm going to look at my daily summary. So that omelet was about 188 calories. So let's say I went and I did some more exercise. I'm going to add exercise. Let's say I went on another walk, for example. You can either search over here or these are the recent ones that I have done. So I'm going to click on walking and I walked, let's say, for 30 minutes again. So I'm gonna add that checked one in. And this is my exercise diary, so I'm gonna go back to my home. And so this is the omelet I ate, this is the exercise I did, these are the net calories, and this is what I have remaining. Okay, so you can actually go, and if you wanna add specifically just food, you can go back here. If you want to add in some more exercise, you can go here. You can add some notes if you wanted to. There's two different options, cardiovascular training and strength training. Also, you're able to hear and look at reports. You can look at your weight for the last few days if you've been logging in for quite a while. You can look at certain nutrition information. You can also look at the other apps MyFitnessPal is affiliated with. You can go look at the community section great way to look at different forums, look at discussion boards, suggestions that they have from MyFitnessPal. You can go look at the blog and you can look at trending articles that they have and latest articles. Let me go back. And we're gonna go back to our homepage and throughout the day, you can keep adding the different things that you've eaten the different exercises you've done and it's just really a great way to hold yourself accountable track and look at your progress and i really hope this tutorial helped if you have any more questions about this app you can definitely check their help section here or feel free to contact us at the clinic and yeah thank you so much Okay, perfect. So that was Samira from our clinic and she did a great video on how to use MyFitnessPal. There's a lot of information there, so feel free to pause the video at certain instances as you're uh, on the website yourself. Um, so you can troubleshoot that way and also see exactly what she was talking about. Hello everyone. 
Okay, so we recognize that our videos are getting a bit long and we don't want to keep you sitting for too long. So we are going to have you pause the video and get up to do a quick stretch break. Um, stretching can be really great to improve, improve your blood circulation and also help relieve tension in your muscles, especially if you work a desk job and you're used to sitting down all the time. So pause the video now and everyone just get up and do a quick stretch and you can unpause the video and we will resume with the content in about two minutes or so. Okay, so now we're going to get into new recipes to try at home. Okay, so our first recipe here is energy balls. So the ingredients for energy balls are one cup of rolled oats, half a cup of the seeds of your choice, so it can be chia, flax seeds, hemp seeds, and you can also add more oats if you don't have these available to you. Um, about a two-thirds cup of natural nut butter, um, you can use peanut, cashew, and almonds, um, two teaspoons of liquid sweetener. You can actually cut out the liquid sweetener um, entirely if you're trying to save on the calories as well. And sorry, and you can also use any type of chocolate, coconut chips, dried fruits, or nuts. I would just caution against adding too much uh, because you want to be mindful of the calories. Uh, but so all you have to do for this recipe is just mix it all up and create like a ball form or any shape that you really want. Um, it's really easy to store in a container in your fridge or on the counter, um, and they make quite a bit at a time. So they are a great uh, long-term snack, especially if you're meal prepping for the week. Um, but once again, just be cautious of the ingredients that you're adding. Make sure you're measuring them out so that you don't add too much. Um, and also try to change it up every week and use a different variety of nuts, seeds, um, and um, the nut butters and stuff like that. Uh, just to experiment and see what works best for you. Our second recipe is lentil balls. Um, so once again, a quick and easy snack. Uh, one can of cooked lentils. Lentils are a great way to get in plant-based protein um, if you're cutting back on red meat especially. Um, you can use one cup of flour of your choice. Um, almond flour is a great alternative, um, especially if you're gluten-free. There's flax seeds, soy sauce. You can actually cut out the soy sauce entirely and just season with a little bit of pepper. Um, then there's vinegar and some fresh parsley and thyme. And if you have an herb garden at home, which we will go over in a little bit later, um, you can add natural flavors to your recipes without adding extra calories from sodium or other preservatives. So it's a great thing to have in your home. And so all you have to do is mash up the lentils and the other ingredients together, form a ball shape, and there you have it. And you can also form them into patties as well. So they work very well for veggie burgers. Um, and especially if you're doing things like meatless Mondays and you're trying to cut out meat at least one day of the week, this could be a great alternative. Um, and if you want to take it a step further, if you're watching your calories perhaps, you can actually just um, take lettuce leaves and create almost like a lettuce bun. Um, so you don't have to have the calories from white bread or any type of bun that way. Okay, so now we're going to go into minimizing food waste at home. This is just a quick little guide. Um, and so before mentioning the actual methods that you guys can try out, uh, understanding the impact of our actions is just as important. So here we can see a few benefits of reducing food waste include saving time, money, and resources for yourself. For example, through buying less food, going to the grocery store less often. Um, you can also reduce methane em emissions in the world, which tend to come from our landfills and dairy farms. You can also conserve energy and resources for the production process of all this food that will eventually be wasted. And overall, you can just live better. Uh, and you'll understand why in just a sec. But clearly, we can see that reducing food waste has a big impact on not only ourselves, but also on our planet, uh, our community as well. Okay, so first off, we have shopping smart. Uh, by simply kind of uh, making a list with weekly meals in mind, you can save money and time and uh, eat healthier food. And if you buy no more than what you expect to use, you'll likely be able to keep using fresh food and also use it all up. 
Uh, the key to this is really just planning, whether it's making a list of meals and ingredients that the household already enjoys uh, for when you just don't know what to buy, or maybe planning a weekly list ahead of time so that you stick to your guns and really just buy the things you only need. Either way, you want to make sure to, for example, include quantities on your list based on the number of meals you'll be making and you know, try your best to look into your refrigerators and cupboards before heading out to, to avoid any confusion and stress while shopping. Uh, of course, buying only what you uh, really need and will use, but also try not to be too hard on yourself sometimes. It's good to treat ourselves every now and then, just don't let it fall into a habit, right? Uh, and then you might also want to have a plan B. So, for example, if you do so see something that you have the feeling you might not finish, uh, do you have another way to use it? So you can get creative with your cooking by making leftover meals like pasta, soups, pizzas, smoothies, and anything really where there's uh, leniency uh, to the ingredients. Um, so yeah, and then buying in bulk, it really only saves money if you're able to use the food before it spoils. Uh, and so that being said, you have to be aware of when food spoils when you buy them. Can you really finish an entire box of avocados or peaches within the next week, right? So on the next slide, um, that being said, I figured that we could play a little quick game and kind of test your knowledge of how long your common grocery items will last. So based on the results, you might be able to get a sense of how prepared you should be when you're going out to shop. Um, so I'm going to name an item and give you about five seconds to quickly think on the spot um, of a range of um, how spoilage rates for each of these items and if you get them right then you can consider yourself a pretty trustworthy person to take uh, shopping. All right so first off we have apples. If apples are ripe how long will they last in the fridge? All right so the answer is four to eight weeks. Wow incredible. Okay and then to refer to our previous slide how long would it take for ripe peaches to go bad at room temperature? The answer is one to three days, so a very short amount of time. And finally, how long after opening a tub of yogurt will that yogurt last in the fridge? The answer is, oh, sorry. The answer is one to two weeks. All right. So yeah, um, here if you want to learn more, on the next slide you'll see a link that'll take you to a more detailed list of foods. It's also where I source that info from, uh, and you can see that list and how long these different foods will last in different environments. Okay, so another method of preventing food waste is proper storage. So find out how to store your fruits and veggies so that they stay fresh longer, either inside or outside your refrigerator. Uh, so for example, lots of fruits give off natural gases as they ripen, which makes other nearby produces spoil a lot faster. So you might want to store bananas, apples, and tomatoes by themselves, um, and or maybe store them in like different bins in your refrigerator. Um, and then also, if you like to eat fruit at a certain temperature, like at room temperature, then maybe you can store them into the fridge for maximum freshness. And then in the morning, you can kind of take out your picks for what you think you'd like to eat in the day, or even like an hour beforehand, right? Um, and then also, for example, berries, they're known to ripen and rot really fast. So after buying it and coming home from the grocery store, you might want to wash your berries first before you even think about eating them, uh, just to prevent some mold. Okay, so our next method, number three, is preservation. Uh, so preservation of your food through different methods like drying, freezing, canning, uh, immersing them in alcohol or olive oils. Uh, the ones that we have here are three that you can do pretty, pretty easily at home. So we have salting or sugaring, and that's just um, putting them into a large amount of salt or sugar, which will draw the liquid out of the food and kind of stop any bacterial growth. Uh, so for example, herb-infused salts and sugars are a pretty fun way to uh, easily preserve your fresh herbs. Another one is vinegar pickling, and because bacteria can't survive in such an acidic environment like vinegar, um, if you have, for example, some leftover cucumbers in the fridge, then you might want to think of making some dill pickles. 
And finally, we have fermentation, which um, is a process that adds nutrition to uh, whatever foods you're trying to preserve, but also gives them a shorter shelf life. Um, and they're usually created with salt, whey, or any sour starter cultures. Uh, so for example, you can think of sourdough, sauerkraut, kimchi, or yogurt um, are all processes of fermentation. All right, so the final method that you can try at home is composting. Uh, it might sound a little bit difficult, but actually your compost bin is already half the process completed. The one that I've, the little uh, process that I've outlined here is very simplified, but it gives you a good idea of how easy composting can be. So you'd start by collecting your food scraps, aka your composting greens, and then store them into the compost pile or maybe freeze them if you don't have a place to store those rotting scraps. And then from there, you can pick a place to actually begin uh, to mix up your compost. So if you have a garden at home, a compost bin, uh, maybe your neighbor's garden or a community garden, uh, those should all work. And then from there, you can actually mix up your compost uh, by mixing up those green scraps and composting browns, which are basically things with a high, um, that are very carbon rich. Uh, so for example, egg cartons, newspaper, uh, dried leaves, and pine needles are good examples of that. And then you can just wait it out, aerate it every once in a while by tossing and turning it, uh, and just wait for your compost to be completed. Your compost um, can also be used at a little in-home garden. So for example, that herb garden that we mentioned earlier, um, not only will it kind of spice up your food, uh, you can also create um, something that is more beneficial to the environment by reducing plastic packaging and saving yourself some uh, spending money uh, for these herbs. Yeah, and just a note on composting as well, we have another great video called Chad's Food Diary where he goes through a couple of recipes that you can actually incorporate your vegetable scraps into to create um, a great vegetable broth. So things like the rinds from your potatoes and other vegetables, um, your onion peels, etc. You can actually boil those down and create a really delicious broth. So make sure to check out that video as well. It's called Chad's Food Diary. And then here we have any more additional resources. Uh, these are just the sources that I based all my info off of, but if you're actually interested in picking up this little eco hobby, just know that the internet has a really large variety of sources. Um, so yeah, that's just, this, this is just the over on different slides, Never mind. Hi everyone, I'm gonna be talking about how we can all grocery shop from home because we all know during lockdown there are, it's kind of hard to get out and it's been really unsafe to go out. So um, I wanna show you that there are options to grocery shop from the safety of your own home. So I've just listed a couple places that offer um, either delivery or free pickup services um, for your groceries. So this is one of the examples, um, Walmart delivery or free pickup. So um, you can get at home delivery for orders over $35 um, for $9.97. Um, and you can also get free curbside pickup, which is amazing. You just go onto their website, um, you put in all the groceries that you want, and then you click submit, you pay for it, and you can even get discounts. Like you can see above, you can get $10 off your first online grocery store order. Um, and then you can just pick it up at your um, local Walmart. There's also free delivery at Costco, which is amazing. So you don't even have to go to the store to get your food. You can get it delivered right to you. Um, so you just search up Costco free delivery online and um, it's by a service called Zoom Zoom service. Essentially, you just order online from any device. Um, and then the, there are these special in-store shoppers that pick up all your items. And then you can get it on the same day that you order it um, or any time that you want it. There's also Fortino's pickup where you shop, they pick, and then um, you pick it up as well. And there's also Voila by Sobeys delivery or pickup. Um, and you can also get $10 off your first order of $100 or more. And it's the same process as all the other places. Um, and yeah, so that's essentially a couple of examples 
um, where you can go and order your groceries online. But um, if you can search up your local grocery store, I'm sure they also have similar services if I didn't mention them today. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to go back and go over some of the content we talked about because there was quite a lot covered in this video. Um, our email address is here as well. So feel free to email us with any questions or if you've tried out any new recipes at home and you'd like to share them, feel free to let us know about that as well. You can find all of our other videos on YouTube at Greg Kernew. Um, and so some of the other videos that I mentioned throughout, um, you'll be able to access those as well and look for specific clips. Um, and then as always, our website is drkernew.com. Uh, so just remember that we're all in this together. We hope everyone is staying safe and positive and we look forward to meeting up with you in person when it's safe. Thank you so much.